If you're using a WorkBee CNC router with lead screws and it has more than one meter of travel, that whip I just showed you is very familiar. In this video I'm going to show you how to make it go away. The first thing you need to understand is why it's happening. The lead screws on these machines is put in compression. Basically, uh, when this machine was originally designed, it was designed to be much smaller than these one and a half meter machines. And so taking that lead screw and eliminating any motion in it by squeezing the lead screw made sense and worked very well. But when you start to get longer and longer, you begin to induce a buckle or buckle that lead screw when you put it in compression. Now I can show you what I mean here. Um, this is a 3 8 inch rod right here and it is um, very similar or close in size to this 8 millimeter uh, lead screw and it's roughly a meter or a little bit longer um, but it's also a bigger diameter and then I have another 3 8 rod that is one and a half times as long. Now I have a one meter wide by one and a half meter machine. The one meter width I don't see any whip at all, but when I get to the one and a half meter, I do. And the reason is it does not take very much force to buckle that one and a half meter long rod. And I can show you, all I have to do is push a little bit and you can see that that, that rod just bends really easily. And that's what happens when you put it in compression. Now, when I go down to the meter, uh, the, the rod here that's uh, what, three quarters the length? Is that the correct math? Um, I can push on it really, really hard and it's not going to buckle. The reality is it takes almost three times as much force to make this rod buckle as it does the one that's one and a half times the length. So what's happening is because this rod is in compression and it's got this little buckle in it, when you start spinning it really fast, it just starts wobbling back and forth and just whipping around. And uh, the easiest way to make that go away isn't going to be to put some damper on here or put a whole bunch of band-aids on the problem. It's simply to reverse the force that's being applied to that lead screw. We're going to put the lead screw in tension and that does not take a whole lot of work. The easiest way to correct it would be to order longer lead screws maybe two inches or five centimeters longer than what's on the machine to begin with. That's going to make it the easiest way. Now I didn't have that luxury so all I did was I took the machine back apart and I actually just cut a half an inch off of the C-beams here. Shortened them a half an inch was all it took. Then I took the end plates on either end and I swapped them so that the recess or the counter bore that the bearing is sitting in is on the outside instead of the inside. And then I did a little bit of machining and tinkering and I came up with a way to put those under tension. I'll show you how I did that. Now you'll notice here that this end plate has the recess for the ball bearing on the outside instead of the inside in your original construction. Um, and then I've put the uh, little spacer washer here and the locking collar on the outside. Now, there's a real problem with these locking collars. It's that they have that horrible little teeny tiny grub screw in there and they always strip. So there's no reason this isn't spinning enough for a bigger screw to throw it off balance or cause excessive wear. So I've gone ahead and used a four millimeter socket head cap screw and uh, just put that in there in order to get a lot more squeeze on, on this joint. And the other thing I've done, which isn't completely necessary, but if you look really closely at the tip of this screw, I've put a little nub on it. And that nub is just the right size to fit in the slot of the threads. Now, like I said, you don't have to do this. If you've got a lathe, if you've got a drill press and a file and a lot of patience, you can put that little nub on there. And then when you put it onto 
your lead screw, if you get it just right, it will actually thread down and generate a little tension. Now you don't want to generate all the tension with that little nub because you'll just shear it right off. So I'll show you in one second how to do the tension. So obviously if you push on this gantry and try and move it one direction or the other, the screws tend to, to spin. So in order to stop them or put some braking force on them, I actually have the stepper motors turned on at this point. Uh, I've, I've got everything hooked up so it would move around, but the stepper motors have a certain holding torque. And as long as I don't break or overcome that holding torque, when I put my clamp on here and squeeze these down, I can put a fair bit of tension on that lead screw. And then all I have to do is with my special one, I can just kind of twist it up against the end there. You, you may have to push a little bit and experiment a bit, but just get that lead screw or that, uh, that locking collar tightened down on there and make sure you do it tight. There's no point in, you really don't want it slipping. So, got that on there pretty tight now. And if I take off my clamp and then reach down here and I can feel I've got tension in that lead screw. It's way more tension than there was to begin with. And we'll go ahead and test and see what that looks like now that we've made the adjustments. And you can see there's virtually no whip left in that lead screw. Just a tiny, tiny bit. If you found this information helpful, hit subscribe. I'll be doing a few more videos on this Work B machine and most likely other topics down the road.